Hello everyone, welcome to the daily newspaper analysis of the Shankar IS Academy brought to you by the Civil Superior team. And this is Abhinaya Sampat for today's current affairs analysis for the date of 5th of November 2024. So displayed here are the topics for the discussion for today's video. So the first article titled Rumila Tapar Dissortion of History, Kerala CM uh, Lords PG National Award recipient from the Indian Express talks about the contributions by the Rumila Tapar historian as well as the uh, objectives of the PG National Award. So the next article would be about the SC Commission to seek report from the NTCA on villages relocation from the Tiger Reserves from the Indian Express uh, discusses about the ST Commission as well as about the NTC that is the uh, National Tiger Conservation Authority and their objectives and functionalities. And the final article would be about how there is importance for the uh, global drug development for a country like India and this article is from the Hindu. So without any much further delay, let's get into the articles discussion one by one and also we will be looking for prelims practice question related to that article. Moving on to the first news, historian Rumila Tapa has been awarded the PG National Award of 2024 for her contributions to ancient Indian history. So, in light of this article, let us see what the PG National Award means and we would also see the few contributions by the Rumila Tapa. So, what is the PG National Award? The PG National Award is an honor given to individuals who have made exceptional contributions to fields such as history, social sciences, literature and intellectual thought. So this PG National Award has been given in as a tribute to a Marxist ideologist and a communist leader who is also a writer called P. Govind Pillai uh, who died in 2012. So in honor of him this award is been given through PG Sanskriti Kendra, a NGO which was established in 2019, which is an NGO who has been giving this uh, award so far. So, one of the famous recipient of this award would be Arundhati Roy in 2023. So, the objective of this award is to celebrate intellectuals who promote critical thinking, secular values and objective analysis. The award is being given to scholars, historians, writers and many social activists who influence society through their commitment to truth and uh, rational discourses. So, in few further slides, we would be seeing what these words would mean also. Moving on to the importance of the award in Indian Academicia, this award highlights the contributions of those scholars who have shaped Indian intellectual and cultural discourses. So, in subject like sociology, the term discourse means bringing in different perspectives or bringing in different serious discussions under a subject. For example, the topic of women in itself is such a big discourse and it has different perspectives and interpretations when it comes to different societies. So, this award also encourages to bring in rigorous scholarships, particularly in history and social sciences, where it recognizes the role of intellectuals in safeguarding academic freedom and resisting ideological basis. So, our historian Romila Tapar, who has also been a professor for the University of JNU for the subject Indian Ancient History, the university is always known for bringing in a space of having academic freedom as well as resisting ideological biases and so on. So, for example, we can take patriarchy, we can take cisman ideologies who has always been in the space for uh, resisting. So, the PG National Award emphasizes the need for balanced perspectives in the interpretation of Indian history and society. So, even for a subject like history which can be subjective in nature, Romila Tapa would be the person who brought in a lot of objective perspective and understanding to learn history. Also, by honoring historians who emphasize secular and evidence-based histo uh, historical narratives, the award promotes a more inclusive and nuanced understanding of our Indian past. So, rather than bringing in stereotypical or mythological understanding of our Indian history, it is more than it. It can be fact-based. So, the next point would be how the uh, this award brings in the encouragement of younger scholars to engage in research that is fact-based and objective and socially relevant. Now, moving on to the contributions of Romila Tapar. So, she has 
Rari interpreted a lot of traditional narratives and provided new perspectives moving away from religious as well as the uh, colonial biases. So, her work has encouraged viewing history through more than the lenses of socio-economic and political changes rather than bringing in a purely cultural or religious aspects. Here, she focused on social and economical context as how ancient Indian society have evolved, focusing on aspects like social hierarchies, social and economic practices and class structures and so on. So, her approach has emphasized how ordinary people and communities have shaped history and it's not just a story about rulers or elite communities. Her other contributions would be how she brought in critical analyzation of religious texts like Mahabharata. Them, Ramayanam and uh, Ashokan edicts. Ashokan edicts would be the first tangible evidences when it comes to Buddhism. Also, other uh, sociologists like Iravati Karve have brought in the analyzation of religious texts like Mahabharata and so on. So, through this analysis, uh, we can understand historical events, social structures and values of the time and so on. So, here Tapar has worked on various texts as historical sources that can reflect societal norms rather than spiritual or uh, mythological stories alone. So, ultimately she has brought in the emphasis on secular historiography here. Uh, Romila Tapa promoted a secular approach to history which separates religious interpretations from historical evidence. So, for example, when it comes to modern history, she challenged the uh, communal interpretations as how sometimes Indian history has been portrayed a fight between Hindu community and Muslim community. So, rather than having this ideology, she brought in a more inclusive way of viewing our Indian histories through the idea of power play. So, finally, one of her greatest contribution would be having an influence on historical research and education. So, for a subject like sociology, research methodology would be the focal point to look into any perspectives or any ideas or subjects about our society. So, through her work, she had transformed the way Indian history can be studied and can be taught in India and she influenced a generation of historians. Here, Romila Tapa's methods have encouraged critical thinking, thus urging the historians to question traditional views and explore alternative perspectives. So, even for her getting this award, she was praised by Kerala CM Pinarayan Vijayan for her mode of resisting communal distortions of history. Distortions is nothing but how history sometimes are interpreted in a very different way. So, she is known for bringing in uh, resistance towards the changed meaning of history and also she is known for challenging a lot of colonial and divisive narratives. Divisive is nothing but having a disagreement. Uh, then and also Tapar is again celebrated for her research and criticism of ideological influences on historical interpretation. So, in, uh, in light of this article, I hope we have covered few contributions by Rumila Tapar. We have covered how characteristics of the award and we will be moving on to a prelims practice question. So, consider the following statements. Here, Rumila Tapar is known for her contributions in the field of ancient Indian history. She had received the PG National Award for the year of 2024 when it comes to secularism and objective historiography and Tapa's research primarily focuses on medieval Indian history and Mughal period. So, which of these statements are right? The option A is right that is the statement 1 and 2. Restatement 3 is obviously wrong here. Tapa's research primarily focused on Indian history and not on medieval period or the Mughals alone. Moving on to the next article, the National Commission for the Scheduled Tribes has brought in the report from National Tiger Conservation Authority on the village relocation plans within the tiger reserves. Here concerns have been raised uh, regarding the impact of the tribal communities with the NCST that is the National Commission for uh, Scheduled Tribes questioning the compensation packages and how they would be uh, advocating with the Wildlife Protection Act's voluntary relocation process. First, let us see what is National Commission for Scheduled Tribes uh, consists of. Looking into the National Commission for Scheduled Tribes, it is an important constitutional body in India where 
it has been established to safeguard and promote the rights of scheduled tribes as well as to ensure their socio economic development so when it comes to the establishment the ncst was constituted in 2004 under the 89th amendment of the constitution of india first it was uh, specifically formed to, to address the issues faced by the scheduled tribes which is separate from the national commission for scheduled caste that is the ncsc you are looking into their composition uh, the commission consists of a chairperson a vice chairperson and three other members of whom are appointed by the president of india so the members are expected to have basic knowledge and experiences when it comes to issues and matters related to the scheduled tribes now let us look into the factual uh, another factual analysis of an another authority which is the national tiger conservation authority it is a statutory body in india where it has been established to strengthen the tiger conservation efforts and also to ensure the protection of tigers and their habitats across our country india so here are a few key aspects of the ntca that is the national tiger conservation authority so first when it comes to establishment the ntca was constituted in 2005 under the wildlife protection act of 1972 thus by following the recommendations of the tiger task force it was formed to provide a more focused and structured approach when it comes to tiger conservation here looking into the objectives first is the protection of the tigers they this is their primary aim uh, that is to pro protect as well as conserve tigers and their habitats in india next is having a wildlife conservation so the authority works towards the conservation of the biodiversity and the ecosystem as well to support the tiger population and finally is to have the goal of sustainable development here the authority that is the ntca promotes sustainable management of tiger habitats and involvement of local communities in their conservation efforts so that the man and wild can live in peace together and it can also reduce the man and uh, animal conflicts also which can sometimes result in drastic casualties so looking into their functions of the ntca first is the policy formation here it formulates policies and guidelines for the tiger conservation looking into the functions of the ntca the main function would be policy formulation that is the ntca formulates policies and guidelines for the tiger conservation including the management of the tiger reserves so they also look into the coordination that is they coordinate with various state governments and ngos and other stakeholders which are involved in the wildlife conservation to implement their tiger conservation programs and so on next is to have monitoring and evaluation as one of their main function so the ntca uh, it monitors the status of the tiger population and also their habitats through scientific studies and researches as well as surveys so it evaluates the effectiveness of the conservation initiatives and finally is to have a capacity building that it focuses on having a uh, restoration projects or capacity building of forest staffs and other local communities to improve their management practices and promote awareness about tiger conservation the ntca oversees the management of almost 50 tiger reserves across the india where they are having designated areas which is aimed for conservation and account of the population of the tigers so these reserves play a very very critical role in supporting the tiger population and their ecological needs and next would be having a public engagement so as i told before bringing in awareness campaigns and education programs to promote public interest when it comes to tiger conservation next is uh, looking into their achievements the ntca has been instrumental in the increase of the tiger population in india so this uh, uh, report has been given by the all india tiger estimation where their results are conducted uh, for every 4 years so in 2018 the estimation reported an increase in the tiger population therefore showcasing the success of our conservation efforts and so on now moving on to a prelims question so that we can have a review of whatever we have seen so consider the following statements national tiger conservation authority is a statutory body it was established under the environmental protection act 
of 1986 uh, and the third statement is ntca conducts all india tiger estimation every 4 years so how many of these statements are correct here only two statements are right of course the statement second is wrong the ntca was constituted in 2005 under the wildlife protection act of 1972 not the environmental protection act of 1986 so moving on to the last article titled india is now a part of global drug development uh, this article highlights the importance and the role of India when it comes to the global drug development landscape and the functions associated with it. In light of this article, we can see about the pharmaceutical industry of India, facts associated with it and of course the regulatory body when it comes to drug development that is the Central Drug Standards Control Organization or the CDSCO. So now without any delay, let's move to the article's discussion. Now looking into the pharmaceutical industry, it is the sector that focuses on the discussion Discovery, development, production and marketing of drugs and medications for use in our healthcare system. So this industry plays a very crucial role when it comes to modern medicines by creating products that can help to prevent, diagnose, treat and also cure diseases and health conditions especially for a uh, health sector like India. So, in pharma industry comes under the Ministry of Chemical and Fertilizers. So, when it comes to pharma industry, especially in Indian scenario, uh, it has played a significant role when it comes to our COVID-19, that is the our pandemic. So, India Pharma has produced the Covaxin to fight COVID-19, which is India's indigenous uh, COVID-19 vaccine by the Bharat Biotech which developed in the collaboration with the Indian Council of Medical Research that is the ICMR, the National Institute of Virology. So, the Central Drug Standard uh, Control Organization that is under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare serves as India's main regulatory body which is responsible for overseeing these laws and ensuring measurements and uh, regulation when it comes to the pharmaceutical industry. You are looking into the turnover. When it comes to a pharmaceutical industry in India, it has reached almost 4,17,000 crore in 2023 to 24 in our Indian money value. Therefore, it uh, brings in the registration of a growth of almost 10% over 2022 to 23. So, this statistics is very important looking into the uh, income generation of an important sector like pharmaceutical industry in our country India. So, this pharmaceutical industry in India contributes around almost 1.72 percentage to country's GDP alone. So, the industry is one of the third largest in the world by volume and the 14th largest by the value. The pharmaceutical and healthcare sector is likely to witness an over 20 percentage growth in hiring this year and it is also expected to generate around 1,34,000 jobs according to the India Skills Employment Report of 2016. So, along with the income generation, there is also a scenario for the employment generation. So, as per the estimates, the pharma industry currently employs almost about 5.5 to 5.7 lakh people. So, these statements and these statistics are very important to have a very nuanced understanding of our pharma pharmaceutical industry of India. So, looking into the uh, drug development scenario when it it comes to India, of course, we have seen how CDSEO is the regulatory body for the drug development. So, in order to know its importance, we need to know the functions of the CDSEO. First is the approval of new drugs and clinical trials. Here, the article have emphasized the importance of bringing in clinical trials on uh, humans. So, one of the main function is to approve new drugs which is both domestic as well as imported and grants clinical trial permissions to ensure safety and efficacy. So, next is the regulation and import of the same drugs. There is regulation of drug imports for quality and safety purposes as well as it issues uh, export certifications to meet the international standards. So, it does not compromise on both the quality and quantity of the uh, pharma functionality which has been produced. Next is having a again quality control and inspection. It conducts inspections on manufacturing facilities to enforce good manufacturing practices that is the GMP. 
here it collaborates with the state regulators so there is uh, sufficient reach of the medicines as well as other drug products to the people who are in benefit next is the uh, post marketing surveillance and pharmacovigilance here it monitor monitors adverse drug reactions and recalls unsafe drugs so as well as uh, bringing in drugs for improvement there is also regulation when it comes to unsafe drugs also other functions when it comes to the cdseo would be regulation of medical devices uh, for example it regulates and approves or classifies medical devices under the under the medical device rules of the 2017 it also looks into the licensing of blood banks vaccines and so on so i hope uh, we have seen an overall review of what is cdseo as well as about uh, what is the pharmaceutical industry so now let us move on to the prelims question which of the following act established the pharmacy council in india option a drugs and cosmetics act of 1940 next is the pharmacy act c is the environmental protection of 1986 and consumer protection act of 2019 so the right answer would be b that is the pharmacy act of 1948 So thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to give a like comment and a share and to further not to miss any other content subscribe to our channel and thank you and have a nice day